Welcome dear students for the first segment of our grade 12 physics class St. Peter's College, Columbus 4, Nigabu branch. Today I am going to start unit 4, Thermal Physics. Today I will cover competency level 4.1 and 4.2. 4.1 Temperature Introduction We are interested in heat because it is the most common form of energy. And because changes of temperature have great effect on our personal comfort. If it is hot, we feel uncomfortable and we need fans and air conditions. If it is cold, uh, we need central heating. And on the proper properties of substances such as water which we use every day. What? If you keep it in the refrigerator, it will freeze. And if, it, if you keep it on fire, it will steam. Temperature, there are so many forms of energy, light energy, gravitational energy and heat energy. Out of this heat is the form of which gives a warmth or hotness. The degree of warmth or coldness is called temperature. Temperature of a body depends on the heat contained in it. Temperature is regarded as a fundamental quantity in heat. Thermal equilibrium, consider two objects. One is, one is in 0 degrees Celsius and the other one 100 degrees Celsius. If you get them both together, heat always flow from the higher uh, place to the uh, lower place. So that uh, from the 100 degrees body, the heat flow to the 0 degrees body. And they both will come to a, uh, a certain temperature. Then there won't be any heat transfer. That instance we call as thermal equilibrium. The condition under which two substances physical contact with each other exchange no heat energy. Two substances in thermal equilibrium are said to be at the same temperature. Here you can see 100 degrees, 0 degrees. Now both will come to 50. See here, hot body and cold body. When you uh, make them together, heat will transfer to uh, the cold body and this both will come to 26 degrees Celsius. Therefore, no heat transfer hereafter. They are in thermal equilibrium. Zero law of thermodynamics. If two systems of different hotness are brought in contact, they change a certain energy due to difference in their temperature till the temperature of these bodies become equal. In this state, bodies are said to be in the thermal equilibrium with each other. If there is another body, if there are two bodies A and B, if they are in thermal equilibrium and, and if there is another body C, if A is in thermal equilibrium with C and B is also in thermal equilibrium with C, then all the three A, B, C will be in thermal equilibrium. Thermodynamic, thermometric properties. Thermometers use some measurable properties of substance which is sensitive to temperature change. Volume of a liquid, length of a rod, electrical resistance of a wire, pressure of gas kept at constant volume. Now see, volume of a liquid. If you heat the volume of a liquid, it will expand. And length of a rod also same. If you heat the rod, it will expand. It will show a linear expansion. Electrical resistance of a wire. When the resistance of the when the temperature of the wire increases, the resistance increases. Pressure of a gas can kept at constant volume. If you have a constant volume of gas and you uh, give heat to it, the pressure will increase. Right? Then there are two fixed points: ice point and steam point. Ice point is the temperature at which a pure water and ice is in equilibrium at ATM pressure at 760 mm Hg. Steel point is the temperature at which pure water is equilibrium with steam at ATM pressure 760 mm Hg. Expression for temperature based on two fixed points. Now we need two fixed points to calibre a thermometer. Uh, here, any of the above thermometric properties, I mean the constant volume of a uh, gas or a rod, linear expansion or a volume of a gas. Uh, now, any of that properties I mentioned earlier, 
uh, any of the above thermometric properties can be used in the construction of thermometers. That is, in the setting up of a particular temperature scale. To calibrate the thermometer, scientists use the two fixed point. As I told you earlier, the zero degree Celsius, the lowest point, and 100 degree Celsius for the upper level. Then, Celsius scale. Celsius is a measurement of temperature in which a zero degrees represent the freezing point of water and 100 degrees represent water what is boiling point at the standard atmosphere, which is the mean barometric pressure at the mean sea level. This temperature scale was developed by Swedish astronomer A. Celsius in 1742. Now we will see an expression for the temperature based on two fixed points. Here you have a scale in theta Celsius. Uh, theta degrees and here you have x. Now here the highest points point at theta h, theta and lowest point theta l. This is the highest uh, lowest point xl, x and highest point xh. Now according to the diagram you can write theta minus sorry uh, Here you have uh, theta minus theta L divided by theta H minus theta L equals X minus XL divided by XH minus XL. So from this, if you subject, subject theta, you will get X minus XL divided by XH minus XL into theta H minus theta L plus theta L. Now, if, it, if this is theta is in Celsius, the ice point is, you know, it is 0 degrees and the steam point is 100 degrees Celsius. Therefore, this H, theta H and theta L is 100 degrees Celsius minus 0 degrees Celsius. Therefore, this uh, point you can uh, write as 100 and this will be 0. So, the expression will be reduced to theta equals X minus XL divided by X H divided by X X H divided minus X L. From this equation, we can uh, find out the unknown temperature. Look here, now you have 100 degrees centigrade, 60 and 0. Here 101, another scale, 101 theta and minus uh, degrees. Minus 1 degree Celsius. So can you find theta? Look here now. According to that theory, you can write 60 minus 0 divided by 100 minus 0 equals theta minus minus 1 divided by 101 minus minus 1. From this equation, you can calculate theta. Theta equals 60.2 degrees Celsius. What is absolute scale? Absolute temperature, also called thermodynamic temperature, is the temperature of an object on a scale where zero is taken as absolute zero. Absolute temperature scales are Kelvin. It was defined using one fixed point, which is called the triple point of water. Kelvin K equals 1 over 273.16 of a triple point of water as measured in the thermodynamic scale. It does not depend on the nature of its working substance or its thermometric property. Absolute zero is the lowest temperature on absolute scale. Absolute scale temperature, now in absolute zero is the temperature where, where molecular motion ceases. No more heat is the, it is the bottom, right? It is minus 273 degrees Celsius. It was uh, introduced by William Thomas Thompson, Lord Kelvin in 1824. Table point of water. To calibrate, we specify a standard fixed point at which all thermometers must give the same reading for temperature T. This uh, fixed point is chosen to be that at which ice 
liquid, water and water vapor coexist in equilibrium and is called the triple point of water. In thermodynamics, the triple point of a substance is the temperature and pressure at which the three phases of substance coexist in thermodynamic equilibrium. It is that temperature and pressure at which the sublimation curve, fusion curve and the vaporization curve meets. Here you can see the, see the vaporization curve, vaporization curve, uh, fusion curve and sublimation curve. All three meets here. This is the triple point. Triple point of water. Expression for the absolute temperature based on triple point. If XTR is the triple point, 273.16 Kelvin, XT is the unknown temperature, that is 273.16 into XT divided by XTR equals T. So when XTR is the temperature of the triple point, T is the unknown temperature, you can find the value from this equation. Relationship between Celsius and absolute temperature. That T equals theta plus 273.15. Where T is the absolute temperature. Now thermometers. We can sense hotness or coldness. But we can't measure it exactly. In a scientific work, we need the quantity accurately. Therefore, temperature, uh, the thermometers were measured. Temperature is a scientific quantity which corresponds to primary sensation, hotness and coldness. These sensations are not reliable enough for scientific work because they depend on contrast. If you touch a person and you say that one is having fever and you are saying it relative to your body's temperature. But a thermometer is a device whose reading is more reliable than our senses. This is a commonly used uh, thermometer, liquid in glass thermometer. Here you have a stem and a bulb. Bulb is included in a uh, liquid. Uh, a liquid, uh, sometimes we use mercury or sometimes alcohol. And uh, you can, uh, when the bulb gets heated, the liquid inside the uh, bulb will also get heated and it expands and gives you the required temperature. Uh, liquid in glass thermometers, uh, when you are using a liquid, that liquid uh, must have certain proper properties. The desirable properties of liquid used in gas thermometers are a uh, temperature, uh, uh, dimensional relationship should be linear, so we can use a linear scale for uh, dimensions. Right? The liquid should have a greater coefficient of expansion. And uh, the liquid should be visible and not adhered to the glass capillary tube. The liquid is should uh, have a broad expansion span, uh, including zero, zero point, point at boiling point. Uh, and also that liquid uh, should be uh, a capillary tube uh, can capillary tube can uh, have a small change in uh, volume cause a large change in length that it should have a very small heat capacity if you give a very small amount of heat it should show a very big uh, difference in your scale gas thermometers they are based on the principle of change of volume or pressure with change in temperature constant volume gas thermometer is the most commonly used one a constant volume gas thermometer is Composed of a bulb filled with a fixed amount of dilute gas that is attached to a mercury manometer or sometimes you have a pressure gauge attached to it. A manometer is a device used to measure pressure. This is a schematic diagram of a constant volume gas thermometer. Here you have the bulb. You can keep it in a, where you want to measure the temperature and this is the manometer. You have mercury in this. And this is a flexible tube to keep this amount of gas inside the, uh, the bulb constant. You have to make sure this the two levels always uh, at this point 
do not change this right when you increase the temperature the pressure inside the bar will increase and this will go up and down so in order to keep this a and b levels same you have to move this arm of this manometer and take the difference from here to here and you can calculate the required temperature constant pressure gas thermometer a thermometer in which the volume occupied by a given mass of gas at a constant pressure is used to determine the temperature we use uh, pv equals nr ideal gas follows inert gas equation and then v is directly proportional to the temperature which is the concept of a constant pressure gas thermometer v is directly proportional to the temperature n and r are constant p is also constant Thermo thermocouple thermometer thermocouple thermometers measure temperature across various applications using a temperature sensor and scale the thermocouple is a temperature sensing device consisting of two dissimilar metals joined together at one end thermistors the thermistor is a special type of variable a resistive element that changes the physical resistance when exposed to changes in temperature the thermistor is a solid state temperature sensing device which acts a bit like an electrical resistor but is temperature sensitive here this is a, a picture i have taken this from the objective physics book you have uh, one two three four five types of thermometers uh, here the name of the thermometer the thermometric properties used here and the range of uh, the thermometer and the advantages and disadvantages right then 4.2 thermal expansion thermal expansion commonly effect of common effect of temperature changes are change in size and change in state of materials in a crystalline solid the intermolecular bonds are stronger than that of the liquids and gases therefore it has a definite shape and a definite volume in liquids uh, the intermolecular uh, bonds are very uh, intermolecular bonds are lesser stronger than the solids though uh, so it is having a, a shape of the container and a fixed volume and gas gases have weak intermolecular bonds so that it will take the shape of the container and volume of the container thermal expansion uh, the mean distance between the atoms of the matter will decide the volume here you can see the mean distance this is the mean distance right mean distance of the atoms when the temperature increases most of the energy will increase the vibration kinetic energy of it some of the energy will increase the average distance between the atoms as a result of the increase of the mean distance the volume will increase this increase in volume is known as the volume expansion on the other hand when the temperature decreases the vibration kinetic energy decreases and the mean distance decreases and the volume also decreases expansion of solids there are three kinds of expansions in solid the linear expansion and the area expansion and also the volume expansion expansion and contraction when substances expand or contract the particles stay the same size only the part on the space between the particles changes you can see the space between the particles has changed the particles in the solid vibrates more when it is heated thus take up more room therefore expansion similar to liquid and gases which is heated now we we'll go in detail with linear expansion linear expansion now consider the length of the rod is l0 at 0 degrees celsius and when you heat it to t degrees celsius it will expand up to here so now it is l t and t0 right t degrees celsius now the expansion is 
L T minus L zero. This part is the expansion. Now this expansion depends uh, with the initial length and also the temperature. So you can write the linear expansion is L T minus L zero, and it will depend on L T minus L zero with L zero and L T minus L with proportional to T temperature and the initial length. So you can get rid of this. Uh, proportionally, we are introducing a proportionality constant. We have L T minus L zero equals alpha times L zero T. That alpha is called the coefficient of linear expansivity. That uh, value depends upon the material of the rod. Coefficient of linear expansion. The expansion of a unit length of a solid when uh, heated through a through a one Kelvin or one degrees. Celsius, the expansion occurring in the length is called the linear expansion. Normally, we denote it as alpha. If here you have delta L is the increasing length, this is the original length, this is the expansivity, and the temperature difference. Right? Linear expansivity is alpha. Now, uses of thermal uh, linear expansion. Now, have you all seen that railway lines? There is a small gap in between two uh, lines when they are fixing. They are keeping a small gap because if they get heated, they will increase their length and deform. This uh, linearity will be uh, deformed. So that uh, we are keeping a small space there. And also, in uh, grinders used for supporting bridges, so as to allow expansion and contraction with changes of season. Right? Uses of linear expansion again. Stopper of a glass, uh, if uh, jam can uh, be taken out by slightly warming its neck. Iron tire, when heated, it expands and slips on the wheel easily when heated and it, is, it contracts and grips the wheel firmly. This is a small experiment that you can do in the science laboratory. Now, the, the ring is here. This is a metal ball, so you can easily put this uh, metal ball through this ring. But when you get, when you heat this uh, metal ball, you it will expand and you cannot put it through the uh, ring. Uh, again, the uses of thermal expansion, uh, biometallic strips. The pro the property that different metals have different expansion conditions is utilized in thermostat that uses in biometallic strips. Thermostats are used in electric irons, electric kettles, uh, etc. So the, the biometallic strips means you are fixing two different metals together uh, at same temperature. If it is a device uh, made of two strips of different metals that are bonded together at same temperature, uh, if the combination is heated, the two strips will uh, expand by different amounts. Then how can it expand? It will bend like this. The smaller uh, expansivity metal will uh, curve inwards, and the, um, the more expansivity have the rod is will be in the outer side like this. Right? So we can use it in circuits as a switch. When you use it in thermostats, uh, that will bend. And the connection will uh, disconnect and the circuit will disconnect. That will use as a switch. You can see the, the two uh, rods here. Now we have uh, made this bimetallic strip. When you heat, this the less coefficient, uh, linear coefficient, uh, one will go inside. And the more coefficient, the linear coefficient one will come out like this and bend this way. This will disconnect the system and uh, that is uh, used in electric ions and in electric kettles. Area expansion. Area expansion of a square unit of a solid through 1 Kelvin or 1 degree Celsius is known as the coefficient of area expansion. Normally we denote it as beta. Volume expansion. The expansion in cubic unit of solid for rise of temperature of 1 Kelvin or uh, 1 degree Celsius is called coefficient of volume expansion. Right? 
then relationship between linear area and volume expansion. Now take this square, the length one unit, breadth one unit. Here, when you heat it by delta theta, by delta theta, then this area will increase uh, like this. One, the unit length one plus alpha delta theta, right? So, if you write the area expansion equation, that is A2 equals A1 brackets 1 plus beta delta theta, In the, instead of this A2, you can write 1 plus alpha delta theta square length into breadth. Right? This is a square, the length is equal to breadth. So, 1 plus alpha delta theta squared equals 1 plus 1 times 1 plus beta delta theta. You expand this binomial expansion 1 plus 2 alpha delta theta plus alpha square delta theta squared equals 1 plus beta theta. Right? Since alpha squared is very small, we can neglect that term. Then 1 plus 2 alpha delta theta equals 1 plus beta delta theta. Then 1 and 1 cancels 2 and 2 alpha, delta theta and delta theta cancels 2 alpha equals beta. So that you can see the relationship between the linear expansivity and the area expansivity. This is linear expansivity. Alpha and beta is the area expansivity. So 2 times alpha equals beta. Same way you can write the equation for volume expansion 2. That is V2 equals V1 times 1 plus gamma delta theta. We denote gamma in volume expansion. Then uh, like this you can write 1 plus alpha delta theta to the power 3. That is volume. Length into breadth into height. So equals 1 times 1 plus gamma delta theta. This is a trinomial expansion. When you expand it, you will get 1 plus 3 alpha delta theta plus 3 alpha cube delta theta squared plus alpha cube delta theta squared plus 1. Sorry, equals 1 plus gamma delta theta. From this, uh, you can cancel this alpha squared and alpha cube uh, because they are very small and uh, you will get 1 plus 3 alpha delta theta equals 1 plus gamma delta theta. Then 1 and 1 cancels delta theta and delta theta cancels and 3 alpha equals gamma. So that you will see 3 times the linear expansivity equals volume expansivity. Uh, let's try these small examples. First one, a steel rod is 3 cm in diameter at 25 degrees Celsius, a brass ring has an interior diameter of 2.992 centimeters at 25 degrees Celsius. At what common temperature will the ring just slide onto the rod? Now, if the rod just slide onto the rod, the diameter should be equal, right? So, the rod should be equal to D. Uh, ring. Then you can write the linear expansive equation that uh, L2 equals L1 times 1 plus alpha delta theta. This is the initial length and 1 plus alpha is given for the rod and for the ring. Alpha delta theta is T minus 25 at 25 degrees Celsius. You need that common temperature. So, T minus 25. Here for the ring, uh, 2.99 the diameter, initial diameter, 1 plus uh, 19 into 10 to the power 6 into T minus 25. When you solve this equation, you can find T as 360 degrees Celsius. Look at this second example. The difference between the length of a certain brass rod and that of a steel rod is claimed to be constant at all temperatures. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Because 
the difference in length will remain constant if the increase in length is same right so you can write the equation for the uh, brass rod and for the steel rod if the increases are same this is the equation for the increase in length l b alpha b delta t equals l a alpha a delta t so you will get L B over L A equals alpha A over alpha B. Thus, the coefficient between the length of the two rods will be the same at all temperatures if the lengths are in the inverse ratio of the linear expansion coefficients. Right. Example number three. What should be the length of a steel and copper rods at zero degrees Celsius so that the Steel rod is so that the steel rod is five centimeter longer than the copper rod at all temperatures. It gives the hint that a steel rod is five centimeters longer than that of the copper rod. To uh, achieve that, always L one minus L two should be five. So you can write the equal linear expansion equation for the. Steel rod, and you can write the same equation for the copper rod. And equation one minus equation two, L one minus L two equals five. Then you can find L one and L two. When there are two equations, you can find L one and L two. Uh, the fourth example. Uh, a brass a rod of length fifty. Centimeters and diameter thirty millimeter is joined to a steel rod of the same length and diameter of forty degrees Celsius. So, what is the change in length of the combined rod at two hundred fifty degrees Celsius? The ends of the rods are free to expand. Expand, right? Is there thermal stress developed at the junction? If it is free to expand, no thermal stresses. Right. So you can write the equation. The total increase in the rods will be equal to the increase in the first rod plus increase in the second rod. Right. So you write the equation here and get the answer. This is an example. Another example. Past paper two thousand and six. This is a question from thermometers. Look at the question. Uh, the internal volume of the bulb of the mercury in glass thermometer is one centimeter cube at zero degrees Celsius. Right? The bulb's volume is one centimeter cube at zero degrees Celsius. The linear expansivity of the glass is. Three into ten to the power six per Celsius, right? That is the linear expansivity. So you have to multiply it by three if you want to get the volume expansion. And the volume expansivity of the mercury is two into ten to the power minus ten degrees per Celsius. The volume of the capillary tube is negligible when compared to the volume of the glass tube. The temperature of the bulb is increased from zero degrees to Hundred degrees, right? Now, find the final internal volume of the glass bulb. Again, you have to use the linear. You have to use the volume expansion uh, equation. That is V two equals V one times alpha del gamma delta theta. But here they don't have given the gamma value, but they have given the alpha value. You know uh, that. Three times alpha is equal to gamma, so you can write three alpha delta theta and get the answer for this. Find the increase in volume of the mercury. So for mercury also you write the same equation V two equals V one times one plus gamma delta theta. There the gamma is given and you can find the volume. Find the rise of mercury volume in the capillary tube. Now you know the increase in the 
glass bulb, glass uh, bulb's volume. And now you know the mercury volume. So from that, you can, from the second answer, you subtract the first answer, then you can find the increase in volume of the mercury. Right? Find the rise of mercury uh, volume in the capillary tube. That part, right? If the thermometer is made using a suitable capillary to have a sensitivity of 0 0.25 centimeters, rise to 1 degree Celsius, find the cross sectional area of the capillary. Assume that the cross section of the capillary is uniform. So you know the capillary tube, if you know the length, and the cross sectional area that is volume is equal to the uh, the volume of the mercury. So now you know the rise of the mercury volume. That value will be equal to uh, the H, the rise H into cross sectional area. Right. So from that equation you can find uh, the rise capillary rise. Right. Then. Uh, here, the second question. Uh, thermometers are designed with a small cavity A. Look here, the small cavity A. As shown in the figure, as uh, uh, protection for accidental overheating of the thermometer. What would be the max minimum volume of the cavity? A, in order to protect the above mentioned thermometer up to 300 degrees Celsius. So again, apply V2 equals V1 plus gamma delta theta uh, for this thermometer and find the maximum volume. And this from the initial volume, you subtract that then you will get the needed volume here. Right, extra volume. The 0 degrees and 100 degrees uh, marks on the scale of an incorrectly calibered thermometer correspond to the temperatures of minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius and 99.8 degrees Celsius respectively. Find the correct temperature when this thermometer is 40 degrees. So that you can use that scale which I have given to lines can you remember the two scales? Use that equation and get the answer. Now, variation of density with temperature. You know, when you increase the temperature, the density will decrease. When a given mass of solid or liquid is heated, its volume increases according to the density of a solid or a liquid decreases on heating. With increases, increase in temperature, volume increase, so density decreases. But water is showing anomalous expansion of expansion. Here you can see now from 0 to 4 degrees, this is the temperature side and volume side. From 0, 0 to 4 temperature, the volume decreases and then it acts as normal. If you consider the density uh, curve, temperature and density, from 0 to 4, density increases and then decreases, uh, decreases right? As normal uh, liquids. Here, uh, this is the anomalous expansion of water, right? The, this property of water, whereby it expands Instead of contracting when the temperature goes from 0, uh, 4 centigrade to 0 degrees and it becomes less dense, the density becomes less and less as it freezes because molecules of water normally uh, form open crystal structures when in solid forms. That is also abnormal. You see here, as water freezes, the hydrogen bonds push uh, the H2O molecules further apart from each other, increasing the intermolecular space, resulting in expansion. 
And we are saying that if you keep a plastic uh, bottle containing water inside the deep freezer, uh, after freezing, if you didn't keep a small amount uh, gap, it will uh, burst, right? It will crack because the volume increases. This is the reason why uh, water freezes, the volume increases. Expansion of liquids. Liquids do not have a definite shape. They take the shape of the container. We cannot specify a liquid by its volume. When a liquid is heated in a container, the container expands and the levels go down. Right? First, the level go down here. You expect the volume to go up, but first it will go a little down. As the expansion of the liquid is more than the solid, further heating will cause the liquid to go up. But we can only observe the initial and final. You will see that the water level was this much and then it will go up. You won't see that decreasing part. Right? But we can only observe the initial and final levels of liquid. This expansion is known as the apparent expansion of liquid. Look here. Now this is the container. When you heat, first the water level goes down a little bit and then only it will go up. Right? So, the L1 to L3 is the apparent expansion and L2 to L3 is the real expansion. So, liquids are having real expansion and also apparent expansion. To calculate the real expansion, you have to get the apparent expansion plus expansion of the vessel. You have to consider the expansion of the vessel too. Coefficient of real and apparent expansion. Now, coefficient of real expansion of the liquid is defined as the ratio of real change in the volume to its original volume per 0 or 1 degree Celsius rising temperature. Right? Coefficient of apparent expansion of a liquid is defined as the ratio of apparent change in volume of the liquid to its original volume per, per 1 degree Celsius rising temperature. Thank you dear students. So I will continue the lesson in the next week uh, from 4.3 to 4.5.